Can the J20 change the course of the war in Ukraine? What did the US and China agree on in Bali? What peace plan did the Ukrainian president voice at the summit? And why Minsk III agreement is not possible? Russia's missile strikes against Ukraine backfired in Indonesia as well. For the first time, political issues replaced the usual discussion about the economy. You are watching UATV, I'm Alexey Matsuka, and let's figure out what happened in Bali and why it's significant. This time a lot of things were at the J20 summit. Ukraine was invited as a participant. The war changed the agenda so drastically that at some point even the program had to be adjusted along the way. Many things happened not in the meeting room, but on the sidelines during the bilateral negotiations. For example, everyone was watching the meeting between the leaders of the United States and China very closely. First face-to-face -face conversation since Biden became president before the leaders only had some phone conversations. Have they agreed on something? Did Biden manage to dissuade China from supporting Moscow? Of course, Beijing is on Russia's side for a reason. In particular, it benefits from Russia's cheap energy resources. But this is a very pragmatic deal where, according to Washington, a country offer can also be made. After all, it's essential for China not to lose the American market. And it looks like there will be a shift. Biden confirmed that a Cold War with China is not expected. We discussed Russia's aggression against Ukraine, reaffirmed our shared belief that in a threat where the use of nuclear weapons is totally unacceptable, and I asked that Secretary Blinken travel to China to follow up on our discussions and continue keeping the lines of communication open between our two countries. I absolutely believe there is need not to be a new Cold War, and I do not think that there is imminent attempt on the part of China to invade Taiwan. Joe Biden, President of the US. The conversation took three and a half hours instead of expected two. That means that they had something to discuss. Of course, they will not go in lockstep. And this is evidenced by China position, which strongly opposes Russia's and exclusion from the J20. It even refused to coordinate the final resolution with the condemnation of the Kremlin. However, common ground has been found and Xi Jinping openly stated what he said to Putin on the sidelines of Samarkand. Together with Biden, he con condemned attempts to unleash a nuclear conflict. Thus, in fact, he put an end to the story of nuclear blackmail, which the Kremlin tries to reveal from time to time. This time, many things did not go according to broke the traditions of in Bali. The president of Indonesia vainly urged his colleagues to talk only about the economy, but in the conditions of war, this will no longer work out. The plans of the participants were originally different. Putin's war has caused devastation around the world, destroying lives and plunging the international economy into turmoil. This G20 summit will not be a business like as usual. We will call out Putin's regime and lay bare under utter contempt for the kind of international cooperation and respect for sovereignty forms like the G20 represent. Rishi Sunak, Prime Minister of the UK. Ukraine is not a member of the J20, although it participated as a guest for the first time. The summit essentially began with President Zelensky's speech. He was one of the first to speak at the very beginning, and this is a unique case. Putin has not showed up. He sent Foreign Minister Lavrov instead. The reason is obvious and willingness to hear harsh criticism from the heads of the top countries in response to the aggression against Ukraine. For the first time the day before the start of the summit, the agenda and the sequence of speakers' speeches were not made public. For the first time the traditional family photo of the summit was ditched. Most of the G20 leaders refused to post with a joint photo with Lavrov. Vadim Tuhan, Ukrainian diplomat. 
In the conditions of actual isolation, almost none of the first persons met with Lavrov, even China and Turkey delegated ministers. Even before the start of the summit, many expected that Indonesia could become a platform for peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. Allegedly, both the West and Europe are, tri are tired of the war. And the head of Indonesia was actively persuading both Zelensky and Putin to come to Bali in person. As they sat later on the sidelines, he wanted to become a mediator and as a host of the summit, he planned to bring both presidents together. It's not clear whether this war his personal initiative or part of the Moscow plan. Over the past weeks, the Kremlin has been actively pressing for negotiations. But the Kremlin is ready to speak only on its own terms. That is, without the slightest hint of returning Crimea and Donbass back under Kyiv's control. Ukraine also made it clear that negotiations were possible, but only on its terms. It means returning to the borders of 19. 91. When speaking at the summit, President Zelensky made it clear Ukraine will not sign any Minsk three peace agreements, whoever insisted on it. Apparently one cannot trust Russia's world, and there will be no Minsk three, which Russia would violate immediately after signing. If there is no concrete actions to restore peace, it means that Russia simply wants to deceive all of you, deceive the world and freeze the war just when its defeats have become particularly notable. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. Sergei Lavrov, the head of Russian delegation, listened to this speech and did not leave the hall. Also, it's obvious what he came to Bali with a heavy heart. He realized that he did not come for a cordial meeting. Upon arrival, Lavrov was hospitalized on the sidelines. They joked that uh, in order to suffer from heart failure, one has to have a heart. There are big doubts about this looking at how indifferent Lavrov is to people's grief, death, and the consequences of the war. Russia tried to deny everything by publishing a video with Lavrov walking in his hotel room, and then he quickly made his way home at the end of the first day, while all other participants remained in Bali and held bilateral meetings. And after that, Russia attacked Ukraine with missiles. Actually, here are the negotiations. President Zelensky urgently rewrote the speech for the session on dig digitalization because how can you talk about new technologies when the country is targeted by missiles? Yesterday at our summit everyone was talking about how to end the Russian war. And after that almost 100 Russian missiles hit Ukraine, burned houses, power plants were destroyed again. Hundreds of cities without electricity, without water and heat supply. Unfortunately, there are human casualties too. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. The J20 has shown that there will be no negotiations on the truth. Ukraine considers it important to cons consolidate military success and only then perhaps to talk with Moscow from completely different positions. But the West as U.S. President Biden thought, will not put pressure on Kyiv. United States are going to continue to provide the capability for the Ukrainian people to defend themselves. We are not going to engage in any negotiation. There is nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. This is a decision Ukraine has to make. Joe Biden, President of the U.S. If the J7 is a team of like-minded members with a rather predictable position, some J20 countries either sympathize with the Kremlin or don't want to quarrel with Moscow for some pragmatic reasons. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz admitted that some countries refused to condemn Russia's actions, for example China or India, which is trying to maintain neutrality. But it's not all that simple. According to the Financial Times, the representative of Delhi insisted on softening of the wording in the final statements. As a result, 
the war in Ukraine was never called Russian. But most of the J20 countries have already condemned military actions in Ukraine. So what are the key outcomes for Ukraine? This is a geopolitical breakthrough. President Zelensky spoke at the J20 in many respects. He set the tone for the entire summit. At the very beginning of the first session, Zelensky spoke about Russia's aggression and its consequences. Then Lavrov tried to refute this and reapproach the West for fueling a new world war. All the politicians were forced to talk about this, about Ukraine, about military operation, about the actions of Russia, which says one thing and does another. Secondly, J20 has become a platform where you can personally address all world leaders. Not a telephone conversation, not by sending messages through the press, but directly. And Ukraine used this opportunity. Well, the warming between the US and China is another result of the meeting. Judging by the rhetoric of the presidents, both Biden and Xi, they managed to find some arguments and common ground. This means that Beijing will not turn its back on Moscow, but it will be much more restrained and more cautious is supporting this war. And at least politicians from all over the world should have gathered in Bali for this. Well, a large-scale missile attack, which happened just at the time of the summit, became a serious reason for discussion on the sidelines of the J20. It indicated that in order to stop the aggression, no words or calls for peace are needed. Ukraine needs modern Western air defense systems, artillery supplies, combat and reconnaissance drones, and a stable supply of ammunition. What will happen next? What kind of weapons will Ukraine receive after the Rammstein meeting? We will talk about in the next happy videos. Please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.